Yahweh, Yeshua, and the gods of Ugarit. Were there two Yahweh? How did first century monotheistic Jews so easily worship both Yahweh and Yeshua? A perspective of Dr. Galen Kura. Thesis For two millennia, Israel was surrounded by pagans who believed in two levels of divinity. Israel's God Yahweh employed this common belief to reveal an important truth about his own dual nature. In Egypt During their sojourn in Egypt, Israelites labored under two levels of divinity. 1. Invisible gods who ruled over nature, and 2. Pharaoh who was supposed to serve as an intermediary between the gods and the people. Thus Egypt provided a two-level mental model of invisible spiritual gods and of a human intermediary. In the land of Canaan In Canaan, Israelites dwelt amongst pagans who held to a two-level co-regency of gods exemplified in Ugarit. One, El, the great god who created everything, and two, Bachath, the secondary god who ruled over spirits, men, and the weather. Thus Ugarit provided a co-regency model of the distant god who empowered an active god whom men could approach. Amongst the Israelites the patriarchs of Israelite history and scripture often spoke, one, about Yahweh, who remains invisible in the heavens, and, secondly, about his angel, who was visible and appears to humans. Both were the same God. For example, Abraham. The Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamma, as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. And the Lord went his way, when he had finished speaking to Abraham. Jacob his grandson Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the boys. The Prophet Moses Behold, I send an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Pay careful attention to him and obey his voice, do not rebel against him, for he will not pardon your transgression for my name is in him. But if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from among you. His successor Joshua When Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man was standing before him with his drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us, or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but I am the commander of the army of the Lord. Now I have come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, The Judge Gideon Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. And Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God! For now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear, you shall not die. The Prophet Samuel The Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. And the Lord appeared again at Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. The Prophet Isaiah Behold, 
the name of the Lord comes from afar, burning with his anger, and in thick rising smoke, his lips are full of fury, and his tongue is like a devouring fire. Thus Israelite religion has its own concept of duality in the Godhead, one deity who is both Yahweh and Yahweh's angel or human-like messenger. In Second Temple Judaism During the Second Temple years, from 516 BCE till 70 CE, some streams of Judaism developed a concept of two Yahweh, one, the eternal and visible Yahweh, and secondly, a visible, tangible manifestation of Yahweh. This happened so that the people whom you loved, O Lord, might learn that they are not fed by what they can grow. It is your word that maintains those who put their trust in you. The word of God is above all the created world, and is eldest and most all-embracing of created things. Thus Jews sometimes referred to two powers in heaven. The visible power was also called in Aramaic the Membra, and in Greek the Logos, that is, the Word. In Jewish Christianity the early Christians were mostly Jews and converts to Judaism who recognized Jesus to be both the Messiah and the Incarnate Word, or Memra. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us. Thus Jewish Christians referred to their one God as both the Father in heaven and the Son who came from heaven and has returned into heaven. In Gentile Christianity Greek and Latin-speaking Gentile Christians abstracted the teaching from Jesus and his apostles into philosophical categories. Thus they formulated a binitarian doctrine of the deity of Christ. When they later came to recognize the Holy Spirit as the spiritual presence of God and of Christ, they formulated their Trinitarian doctrine of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, very God of very God, begotten, not made, and in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and Giver of life, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified. In sub-Christian sects, all deviant forms of Christianity have denied either the singularity of the true God or the deity of Jesus Christ. By the second century, rabbinical Judaism declared the two powers in heaven to be a false doctrine demoting Jesus to a deluded rabbi. By the fourth century CE, Arianism asserted that the Father begot the Son at a point in time. Arians hold that the Son is God, but is a creature subordinate to the Father. By the 21st century, Jehovah's Witness remain essentially Arian, translating John 1.1, 1, 1, the Word was a God. Classical Mormonism teaches that the God whom they worship was once human until he was exalted to Godhood, that the Father physically begot Jesus his Son, and that faithful Mormons will one day be exalted to Godhood. This is a form of polytheism, a belief in many gods. Conservative Seventh-day Adventists assert that Jesus was the Archangel Michael until he was begotten by the Father as a human being. Absolute Monotheism 
religions and philosophies that tout the absolute singularity of their deity do so by denying the Trinitarian nature of the only true God who exists as the eternal invisible Father, as the incarnate eternal Son, Jesus Christ, and as the eternal Holy Spirit. Conclusion Many first-century Jews were able to accept that Jesus was God incarnate because they had already developed a doctrine of two powers in heaven who were Yahweh. In the following century, non-Christian Jews repudiated that doctrine, inventing the absolute monotheism that other religions have since adopted.